We went to Peru in 2007. We had a three-week tour of Peru and we went to a lot of different places. We went to Lima, Iquitos, we went to Cusco, we went to Oriental, we went to Machu Picchu, we went to Puno, we went to Arequipa, we went to Ica and we went to Paracas. And from Paracas we went out to see the Ballestas Islands uh, uh, and see all the wildlife out there. And I'm not going to cover all these places, this is a kind of highlights. So here we go. Um, the people of Peru were lovely. That's one of the things that we really enjoyed about it. I don't think they were just doing it for the tourists. There was a lot of native dress. And this is a, a woman, she was doing it for the tourists, obviously, uh, in Oyuntambo. Um, and uh, she was spinning yama wool and brought a wee boy with her. Um, but the, the people were very colourful. They were very nice, very poor. A lot, but quite a poor country, Peru. Uh, but uh, in fact uh, were, were extremely welcoming and, and pleasant. And after we'd been in Lima for a few days, we, we flew to Iquitos and we um, had a, a little tour on the Amazon. You can only go to Iquitos at the crack of dawn because the vultures, they, they put a, a rubbish tit next to the airport and the vultures hover around uh, and they damage the airplane's engines. So the only time the planes can land at Akitas is before the vultures have got up in the morning. So we had a very early start and off we went to Akitas. So here we are on the Amazon and we went down the Amazon in, in a boat to Explorama, which was a, an inn in the rainforest in, in, in the Amazon. There were lots of wild flower. There were lots of these little frogs, that, that, that the uh, poison dart frogs, um, the jungle itself, the rainforest and some massive trees. There's this, this tree, you can see the size of it when you get down to the people at the bottom. These are people compared to the size of the tree. In the morning we went off, had a wee boat trip on the Amazon, so the parrots getting up in the morning. A lot of birds, a great deal of wildlife about. Um, very enjoyable to see and very nice to hear. And these massive water lilies, about seven feet in diameter. And dolphins, we saw some of the, the famous dolphins on the Amazon. The people live in these kind of huts on stilts because the water level goes up and down and some of them use these uh, blow torches to, to blow darts for killing things. These were the kids getting pens. We, we brought them pens and what have you as presents. One with the sloth and there is this a sloth in the tree. I think it was a tame one. I don't think it was a wild sloth but they're amazing creatures. From there um, we went to Cusco which we enjoyed, and then we went to Oliantambo, uh, which is an old Inca settlement, and then we, of course, had to go to Machu Picchu, and a lot of you maybe been to Machu Picchu, but it's an amazing place, we really enjoyed it there, and we had beautiful weather, this was April in 2007. There's the road up to Machu Picchu, and before they built the road, you had to hike your way up the, the, the cliff, but up we went in the bus, and there's the terracing, and all the old buildings of the restored Machu Picchu and Nina Picchu, which is the smaller peak in the background. Amazing stonework. Uh, Machu Picchu is from round about, I think, the 15th century. Um, the Incas built it, of course. And these are some of their houses. No mortar, just, just stones, very nicely sculpted together. That's the Temple of the Sun in Machu Picchu. Again, beautiful stonework. And that was called the Hitching Post of the Stars. I think it was uh, an act, uh, Yamas, of course, lots of, lots, lots of Yamas. Everywhere you go in, in Peru, there's Juanacos and Yamas. And there was the water system starting at the top of the hill and working its way down so that people could have fresh water for their homes. So that was a general view of, of Machu Picchu. There's a, a walking trail. We cheated. We didn't do the walking trail. We, we, we arrived in a bus. But you can, in fact, walk on a thing called the Inca Trail. And that's the view from the Sun Gate on the Inca Trail looking down towards the, the settlement at Machu Picchu. The building methods are just absolutely fantastic. That stonework is actually from just near Cusco, but uh, you can see the way they must have shaped these stones to fit just perfectly together without any mortar. And the wee blobs on them, they think were used for harness so that they could lift the bigger stones. There's some more stonework that's underneath the Temple of the Sun. Beautiful, intricate stonework. Uh, kui, you want fancy kui for, for your dinner? I actually had one in a restaurant. I, I had a guinea pig. But the people normally keep guinea pigs, um, which they eat on special occasions. 
We went on a train and went from Cusco to Puno, which is on Lake Titicaca, right across the Altiplano, quite high up. Um, the Altiplano is just over 12,000 feet up. It is, as it suggests, flat, uh, but uh, some of our members had trouble breathing because of the, the high altitude. We had a medicine man on the, on the train, so here he is performing. <laughs> He was fueled by cocoa leaves, so there he is having some cocoa leaves. Everywhere you went, you got cocoa tea and what have you made out of the cocaine. And we also had on the train somebody dressed up, and when the conquistadors from Spain came to Peru, uh, they were, of course, much whiter than the local people. So they used to... Uh, Michael, sorry, you need something. Uh, let, me, let me unmute you. Uh, where are you? If I can find you. Uh, maybe we can take questions at the end. Is, is that okay? Um, let me try and find Michael and get, get a thumbs up from him. I'm going to stop the share for a second. Where's Michael? Here he is. Oh, I haven't got a, a microphone for you, Michael, so I can't let you speak. Um, sorry, <laughs> I'll, I'll go back to the presentation. Um. Ah, here we are. Right. Yes, uh, the, the, the Spanish were, were, were white people, so they made themselves to imitate the Spanish. They made these white knitted suits to, to make themselves all white. Um, white. Of course, the inevitable music with the band pipes. That was on the train going to Puno. I really like that music. Very energetic. Uh, Lake Titicaca is the place where they have the Eurus Islands, which are famed for um, the reed boats. These are floating islands. The Euro people were, uh, had real problems with their neighbours because they were warlike, or the Euro people weren't warlike, but the neighbours were. So they decided to move on to floating islands, and they cut down the reeds and made islands out of the reeds on, on the lake. And uh, these are floating islands, and they're perpetuated by just simply adding more reeds to the top of them. So the islands gradually sink, and there's somebody collecting the reeds. There's some of the islands. They used to be out far in the lake, but now they're brought in close to the shore because the enemy's no longer there. One of the reed boats. Very, very colourful people. They're exceptionally colourful. It's one of the lookout boats on the island. There's the fisherman, and he showed us his catch that he got in a holding pond. There's all the fish that he, he caught. And they make lots of very, very beautiful embroidery. They did a wee dance for us and eventually um, said farewell. They also sold us some stuff and I think they get quite a lot of their income now um, from tourism and from people buying things. Which they're saying goodbye. And finally in Peru, um, the Nazca Lines. I've always wanted to see the Nazca Lines, so I got my ambition fulfilled. Off we went in a wee aeroplane. There we are in the wee airplane with some Japanese people. And they see the Nazca lines by flying about 1,500 feet, flying round and round and round. So you get a chance to, to photograph them. Most of them are straight lines. There's about 1,000 kilometers of straight lines, but there are some other things as well. Um, there's a hummingbird, a monkey, a spider. In fact, all of these figures are, are visible. And I think I made a... I went on the internet to find out how many there are. There are 70 of these uh, geomorphic shapes apart from the straight lines and the Nazca lines. There's the monkey again, the hummingbird, spider, and a whale, just for a good measure. So there we are. That is a very quick uh, tour of Peru. Ask you, John, um, we were in Peru about four years ago, and an uh, absolutely fascinating country, but... Uh, I started off with having ceviche, which is a local delicacy in Lima. It's a marinated fish, but they only marinate it for un poco momentos or something for about three minutes. That didn't really do much for my stomach. And then when the altitude kicked in, it was really, uh, it really hit me quite hard. I found it very difficult because we ended up at 4,000 meters at one point and it was like walking with legs. I just wonder how you got on with the altitude. 
I, I had no problem myself, but there were two of our <coughs> team had to have medical assistance. They had to have oxygen and, and uh, uh, doctors seeing to them and what have you and, and helping them out. So yes, altitude was a, was a problem. Uh, I also had the opportunity of having the fish in Lima and uh, unlike you, I was wise enough not to partake of it. <laughs> it was a bit, I saw how long they were cooking it for or how short they were cooking it for and I thought, well, I'm not going anywhere near that. Thank you. John, what did you actually bring back? You, you, you obviously bought some of the native craft. It, I hope, it is real native craft, isn't it? It's not kind of stuff they're selling that somebody brought in from China before it. Very definitely down. not. No, I, th I think that's a problem throughout the world. We, we've travelled quite a lot, and an awful yeah. lot of the, the goodies that are sold yeah. in tourism, like from me, <coughs> Cambodia or China or somewhere else. No, um, it was genuinely made by, by the local people, and uh, it was of a high stand. And an awful lot of them have guanaco or, or yamas and what I mean. They tend to start with the, the yama wool, and then they will dye it and weave it into things. So an awful lot of the, the things that they're selling are, are, are made out of uh, textiles. We didn't bring back a lot of stuff, but, but what we did bring back was authentic. It, was, it definitely was made in Peru. Yeah, what, what language uh, do they use in Peru? What language do they use? Uh, most of them speak Quechua, which is the local language, and a uh, fair few of them that don't speak Quechua speak Spanish. So it's Spanish oh. or Quechua. We oh, found yeah. the, the people that spoke English, there, there were some, but there weren't many people speaking English. Mm. But the Quechua mm. language is definitely very much alive, and I would say it was the normal language for most of the people in Peru are speaking the native Quechua language. 